Hello, and welcome to the first Public Information Center for the City of London's Carling Creek Stormwater Management Master Plan. I will introduce the project team before we get started. Monica McVicker is overseeing the Master Plan as the Project Manager on behalf of the City of London, and Nicholas Kriegsman is a Senior Water Resources Engineer with Matrix Solutions in the role of Consultant Project Manager. The key team members also include Matthew Legrand, leading the hydrology portion of the study, and Phil Campbell, responsible for providing input into the development of alternative solutions requiring the design of municipal infrastructure. We want to acknowledge that we are on lands traditionally occupied by Indigenous peoples. They continue to care for this land, they continue to shape the City of London, and we want to show our respect. Hundreds of years after the first treaties were signed, they are still relevant today. In accordance with ongoing public health guidelines, the City of London is hosting public meetings over virtual platforms. This meeting is being hosted as a pre-recorded video to ensure it is available to review at your own convenience. The presentation is approximately 30 minutes long and is available for download at the link in the description as a PDF with the script attached to each slide. Please take the time to review the entire presentation and provide feedback. The agenda for this presentation includes an introduction, including project overview and purpose, a review of the provincially recognized environmental assessment process, a description of the study area, and a summary of the work completed to date. Following the introduction, I will present a review of the hydrology update portion of the study. Then I will provide a brief overview of some of the stormwater management solutions that are being considered for the Carling Creek watershed. Following that, I will present project-specific objectives and evaluation criteria that will be used to determine the preferred servicing alternatives that will fulfill the problem statement. Lastly, I will outline the next steps in the Municipal Class Environmental Assessment Master Plan process. The downtown core of the City of London continues to evolve and redevelop. Currently, the core area is serviced with a complex system of stormwater infrastructure, some of which has been in existence for more than 100 years. The City initiated the Stormwater Management Master Plan study to plan and prepare for future redevelopment and infrastructure improvement within the downtown area that will address the existing and future flooding risk. Throughout this project, we will assess and characterize existing and potential future flood risk within the Carling Creek watershed. To do this, we have developed system-wide storm sewer models that will be used as the primary flood risk management tools, both for this project and for the city's use going forward. These detailed models enable us to evaluate the improvement alternative's effectiveness in addressing level of service deficiencies and comparatively evaluate those alternatives from a flooding reduction and cost perspective. Following this flood risk characterization, we will work with the City to develop a long-term flood mitigation implementation and prioritization plan for improvements to the City's drainage infrastructure. The master plan will ultimately fulfill the requirements of the environmental assessment process and allow the City to integrate improvements into other initiatives such as the ongoing infrastructure renewal plan and bus rapid transit program. The Stormwater Master Plan is being completed following the provincially recognized Municipal Class Environmental Assessment process. This process includes up to five phases, depending on the type and complexity of the study. A Master Plan consists of Phases 1 and 2 only. Phase 1 is called Problem and Opportunity. This includes the assessment of existing conditions to identify the problem to be remedied and the opportunities available within the confines of the project. With this Public Information Centre, we are nearing the completion of Phase 1 of this process. Phase 2 is called Alternative Solutions. In this upcoming phase, we will develop and evaluate alternative solutions to address flood risks identified within the City. Following Phase 2, we will have a second Public Information Centre, which will be conducted similarly to this one. Updates will be posted in the local newspaper and on the City's project webpage. The problem and opportunity statement for this project is as follows. The City of London is undertaking a stormwater management master plan for the Carling Creek watershed. The master plan will develop a long-term stormwater management strategy that addresses stormwater servicing deficiencies, surface flooding, and infrastructure renewal for existing and future land use within the area described as the core of the City of London. This statement was developed based on findings throughout phase one of the master plan process. Next, I will provide an overview of the Carling Creek watershed. Carling Creek is a historic watercourse that flows west through the downtown core of the City of London. 
dating back nearly 150 years, Carling Creek has evolved from a natural creek to an urban waterway to an almost completely enclosed stormwater drainage system. The evolution of the watercourse, which at one point involved the construction of a dam across Richmond Street and the creation of a water body historically referred to as Lake Horn, has resulted in obstructed overland flow paths and flooding problems throughout the watershed. The Carling Creek watershed is divided into two sections, a northern branch commonly referred to as Trunk A, and a southern branch which is comprised of two main trunk sewers referred to as Trunk B and Trunk C. All three branches of the Carling Creek drainage system have a history of surface water flooding within the municipal road right of way and private properties. The study area for this project includes a significant portion of the downtown core of the City of London. The study area is indicated by the black polygon on the map. Some of the modeling and flooding analyses extend beyond the Carling Creek watershed boundary. This ensures we can adequately assess features and conditions near the edge of the study area. As shown on the figure, there is reported flooding throughout the study area and chronic ponding locations along major transportation corridors throughout the downtown area. The Carling Creek Stormwater Management Master Plan aims to address flooding risk and provide a long-term plan that will facilitate redevelopment and infrastructure improvement and renewal in the downtown core. The study area falls within the jurisdiction of the Upper Thames River Conservation Authority. Next, I will provide an overview of the hydrology update for the Carling Creek watershed. The completed urban drainage assessment is based on an integrated model considering overland topography and flow, ditches, culverts, sewer inlets such as catch basins and ditch inlets, and the sewer pipes. These components work in an interconnected way both in real life and in the model. Runoff from rainfall events enters the storm sewer, known as the minor system, through catch basins and ditch inlets. Flow beyond the capacity of the inlet or the catch basin opening will pond or travel on the surface and along roads. When the sewer is full, surcharge occurs and the water travels out of the full sewer onto the road. The flow in the sewer will continue downstream to outlet in a river or a stormwater management pond. Flow on the surface will travel in downhill directions based on the topography. It will be recaptured into the sewer system if it passes a catch basin with available capacity, or it will continue to flow overland to a ditch or creek. The city has developed models of the storm and combined sewers within the area commonly referred to as the downtown core. This includes a majority of the Carling Creek watershed. The project team has expanded this model to assess the existing conditions of the sewers and identify areas of higher flood risk within the Carling Creek watershed. In future tasks of this project, we will use this model to evaluate mitigation options to reduce the flood risk in identified areas. The model was previously validated using the rainfall and available flow monitoring data to confirm the results are appropriate. The stormwater collection systems are most impacted by short duration, high intensity rainfalls like summer thunderstorms. Since the initial Carling Creek or Core Area InfoWorks model was developed, there have been a number of construction projects either completed, initiated, or planned to be completed in the immediate future. In order to represent the hydrologic characteristics of Carling Creek, a detailed update of the InfoWorks model was undertaken. The model updates include the following key infrastructure renewal and improvement projects. The Adelaide Street Grade Separation Project, which is shown in the graphic, roadway and sewer improvements throughout Old East Village, proposed storm servicing improvements along William Street in Old North, and proposed bus rapid transit related improvements along the York Street corridor, particularly at Rectory Street. The Carling Creek Northern Branch encompasses a drainage area of approximately 2.25 square kilometers. The northern branch of the storm sewer flows east to west through Old North, crossing Oxford Street, and connects with the main branch of Carling Creek. The storm sewer system services mixed land use along Oxford, with primarily residential properties located to the north of the Oxford Street corridor. Infrastructure ranges in age from 4 to 120 years old. The Carling Creek Southern Branch encompasses a drainage area of approximately 2.76 square kilometers. The southern branch of Carling Creek flows east to west through a portion of Old East Village, snaking along sections of Lorne Avenue, William Street, Central Avenue, Pall Mall, and Mill Street. The main branch of the Carling Creek storm sewer system discharges to the North Thames River within Harris Park, south of Oxford Street. 
The storm sewer system services mixed land use, including commercial, institutional, and residential properties. Infrastructure ranges in age from 5 to 120 years old. The Carling Creek Stormwater Master Plan Study has progressed through the background review and model review phases in 2021 and 2022. The work to date has focused on updating the InfoWorks hydrologic hydraulic model and understanding existing conditions level of service of storm drainage infrastructure. To date, the model has been used to confirm locations of historical flooding and identify areas of potential flooding risk under a range of design storm events. A significant amount of time has been spent updating the model to reflect the recently constructed municipal infrastructure in Old North and Old East Village and proposed infrastructure along Adelaide Street and York Street. The assessment of the performance of infrastructure impacted by these projects has also been completed as part of this project. Modeling results generally match areas of historic flooding and identify the main branches of the Carling Creek storm sewer as having deficient capacity to convey the City of London standard, the one in two year storm event. Peak flows were estimated for a range of flood events. Flood events are described by the annual probability of occurring. For example, a 100 year flood event means a flood of a magnitude that has a one in 100 or 1% 1 chance of happening every year. A five-year flood event means a flood of a magnitude that has a 1 in 5 or 20% chance of happening every year. The calibrated model was used to run the design storm events under existing and planned land use conditions. We simulated the 1 in 5 through 1 in 100 year storm events. The graphic illustrates the areas identified as having a flood risk under the 1 in 5 year storm event. These areas correlate to historically noted private property and municipal right-of-way flooding. The updated Carling Creek model will be used to assess potential improvement alternatives and evaluate those alternatives' effectiveness in reducing flooding impacts within the downtown core. Before we review stormwater management servicing alternatives, I will provide a short overview of some of the general stormwater management solutions that are typically used to address servicing improvements in urban settings. Bioretention cells are topographic depressions used to store and infiltrate stormwater. Cells contain natural vegetation to enhance attenuation and infiltration of the stormwater and provide both quality and quantity control. There are typically multiple ground layers, with the lowest layer designed as a gravel lining. Smaller cells without a gravel lining are sometimes referred to as rain gardens. Under drains are sometimes included to allow for the redirection of groundwater. Bioretention cells are useful for stormwater attenuation as they enhance ecological diversity, require low maintenance, improve water quality, are highly customizable, and are aesthetically pleasing for the community. Bioretention cells can be used to fill small green space gaps between impervious areas and are highly malleable to the environment. They typically occupy less space than a stormwater pond and thus are ideal for smaller scale catchments. The infiltration capabilities of a bioretention cell are dependent on the groundwater environment as well as the local soil type and should be considered when designing a bioretention cell. Bioswales are linear trenches that have natural vegetation to attenuate and infiltrate stormwater. Bioswales are similar to typical roadside ditches but have enhanced measures for increased stormwater attenuation and infiltration. Bioswales could be designed similarly to bioretention areas with a base gravel layer and subsurface drain to operate as a dual system. Bioswales are useful for stormwater control as they can enhance existing roadside drainage or be placed between highway lanes as islands. Bioswales are visually appealing green infrastructure that can be used for increased water quality and quantity control. Bioswales offer limited enhancement as storage spaces and are better applied to attenuate rather than store flow. Swales must be maintained, such as being mowed and cleaned, in order to ensure a long lifespan and consistent functionality. Stormwater ponds are a traditional stormwater management tool that are designed to gather rainfall and surface water runoff. The pond temporarily stores water and then releases it at a controlled rate, providing both water quality and quantity control. Stormwater ponds are common end-of-life facilities placed at the bottom of catchments to attenuate flow and control water quality. Stormwater ponds are typically larger than bioretention cells and can be wet or dry. Wet ponds have permanently wet cells and are broken into four bays and main cells, with the former capturing most of the inbound sediment from runoff. Dry ponds have a lower footprint but do not control water quality to a great degree. 
While stormwater ponds occupy significant surface space, many are integrated into communities as natural features for wildlife habitats and improving park aesthetics. Ponds can provide significant stormwater attenuation. Subsurface infiltration chambers are perforated cylinders with open bottoms which store and infiltrate stormwater. Chambers are installed below the ground surface along a storm sewer network, either online or offline, and capture and release stormwater at a controlled rate. Similar to stormwater ponds, infiltration chambers provide great attenuation potential due to the large capacity. The open bottom to the chambers allows for increased infiltration and groundwater recharge, and the controlled outlet pipe size allows for flows to be throttled. Subsurface chambers are useful at conserving impervious areas, such as parking lots, while providing a high degree of stormwater attenuation. The infiltration and storage capabilities of subsurface storage depends largely on soil type and groundwater conditions. Subsurface tanks can be partially full at the start of storm events if they did not adequately drain from previous events, or will have limited infiltration if the soil is fine or if the groundwater table is high. Permeable pavement is a porous surface that can be used to replace a standard concrete asphalt for parking lots, driveways, or roads. Permeable pavement can be interlocking concrete blocks, a coarse grain asphalt concrete, or a plastic grid system. Permeable pavement can also be grassed, which increases the visual appeal of a roadway or parking lot. Permeable pavement is useful for converting impervious space to pervious space while maintaining the commercial and structural utility of the pavement. Developed land that must be maintained can be converted to pervious pavement with minimal loss in developed space. Permeable pavement is useful for increasing stormwater infiltration, reducing pollution, and reducing water temperatures. The pavement must be routinely maintained and monitored to prevent sediment dumping or other blockages that may inhibit permeability. Once sediment enters some of the pores of the pavement, it may be difficult to remove, so preventative measures are key. Next, I will provide an overview of the development of stormwater management alternatives and evaluation criteria for the Carling Creek Stormwater Management Master Plan. The development of stormwater management improvement alternatives for Carling Creek will likely consider a range of different solutions, including those previously described. The objective of the overall master plan approach is to integrate improvements to the stormwater collection system with the city's long-term storm servicing needs within the downtown core, reduce flooding risk on public and private property, minimize social, cultural, and financial impacts to residents, local businesses, and the public, consider the environmental impact on the Thames River and surrounding lands, facilitate infrastructure renewal and allow the city to assess stormwater servicing improvement priorities, and finally to consider the total life cycle cost of the projects compared to flood risk and flood damages. A broad range of evaluation criteria will be used to determine the ultimate servicing solution for the Carling Creek watershed. These criteria include environmental factors, technical factors, financial costs, and legal or jurisdictional implications. Ultimately, the goal of the project is to comprehensively evaluate a long list of alternatives that will improve the level of storm sewer servicing within the downtown core and provide the city with a master plan of infrastructure improvements to reduce the risk of flooding. The master plan alternatives will be screened and evaluated using a scale of high, medium, and low impacts to each of the listed factors. High scoring factors generate beneficial impacts and or have no substantial technical challenges. Medium scoring factors present a mix of positive and negative elements with some impacts. Low scoring factors present negative impacts or present significant technical challenges or costs. It is anticipated that opportunities for implementation of stormwater management measures will focus on using city owned property within the downtown core due to the built out nature of the drainage area. Where feasible, low-impact development and stormwater measures will be integrated into municipal road rights-of-way or green space. In some cases, it is anticipated that storm sewer conveyance capacity improvement alternatives will be considered if stormwater management alternatives are not feasible. For the final section of this presentation, I will provide a quick description of the next steps for this project. Following completion of any outstanding modeling tasks, we will finalize the overall existing conditions flood risk assessment for Carling Creek and complete a sensitivity assessment of the existing system resiliency related to climate change and anticipated future developments. We will then develop mitigation alternatives to reducing flood risk and improve the level of storm sewer servicing in identified areas of flood risk. 
following the development of the mitigation alternatives, we will host another public information center to present the alternatives. Feedback gathered at that meeting will be considered during our evaluation of the mitigation alternatives before preparing the implementation plan for stormwater improvements. Thank you for attending this presentation. As we've mentioned, your feedback and input is an important part of the master plan process. Please complete and submit a flooding survey form. The flooding survey is available online in digital, fillable, or print-friendly versions. You can submit via email to the addresses on the screen or print a copy and drop it off at City Hall. Please stay tuned for our second public information center in a couple of months.